Hello everyone, I hope that we're doing well. Um, welcome to the first career session of this week. And uh, it's going to be focusing on um, CV writing because um, first of all, let me bring up my presentation. <coughs> Yes, it's going to be about CV writing, uh, just because we have, first of all, to uh, have your CV very well written. We store them for future use and also for this week's evaluation. And then for future use, once uh, you continue into the next uh, phase of the training, that means if you get to pass week zero and then you join, um, you know, the whole 10 academic communities starting the cohort C training officially. And uh, as a quick intro about the career session though, career sessions are going to be focusing mainly on non-technical skills, because even though you are going to be getting uh, technical skills on data engineering, machine learning, uh, and also gen AI on top of the current technical skills you have, we have realized that uh, being a kind of professional who's able to communicate themselves, who's able to work effectively in diverse teams, who's able to know how to give and receive feedback, who knows how design thinking works, who knows how strategic thinking works, everything, and leadership as well. We saw that it's very essential. And also saw that it's something that majority of the hiring uh, companies and also hiring managers look up to because even though you are very good at your skills they are not going to really be selecting you if you are the person who cannot communicate what they know to someone who's not a gen ai let's say who, who doesn't know anything about coding so how do you get to learn all all that which are actually the essential part of your professionalism, like being able to explain everything technical to a stakeholder who doesn't know anything about coding, and also being to be a very good team player. Of course, you're going to practically be doing it here at 10 Academy, but also having the essentials, like basic introductions about them, and also doing different challenges about them. It's very, very crucial. So that's why we have career sessions, and career sessions are going to be coming back around everything that makes you a kind of professional that stand out on this global job market out here. So welcome to the first career session for this week. For this week, we have two career sessions. And even for the rest of the training, um, if you get to join us, you are going to be seeing that they will be coming every Tuesday and every Thursday. And majority of the deadlines come on th Saturday. Uh, but, you know, sometimes the deadlines are modified. Like for this one, is, for instance, for the CV writing, you will have to do the very first submission today, and then we will give you feedbacks, and then you go work on the feedbacks, and then do the final submission on Saturday. So for today, it doesn't mean you have to submit the CV you have. You have to submit the CV that fits into the standards that we're going to be having to look at here <clears throat> and then just because you will be having very short deadline today we will go through what you have done so far what you have just submitted and then give you different feedbacks and then on saturday you will ensure that you submit very very good cv no matter if you have work experience no matter if you're just a student graduating no matter if you have like very extended 10 years of experience out there you know we are just going to be having to look at the essential CV um, context that you do not have to miss and also how you can uh, shape your CV according to any size of your experience or your skills. So welcome to the session. Let's get started. Okay, before we start, uh, if I can get like thumbs up reactions that we together, that would be super. Okay, okay. Okay, all right, thank you so much. Okay, let's go ahead and continue with the session. It's going to be interactive, so feel free to answer the questions uh, that will be popping on in the chat box or even, you know, raise your hands to answer. 
you know, just feel free to interact yourself. <clears throat> so let's look at the CV overview. Why, why, why do we actually do the CV? Well, what's a CV and what is its role in your career and everything? First of all, your CV is a marketing piece and it should be highlighting your strongest points, your education, professional experience, projects, skills and accomplishments, because these are the things that really defines you in a professional setup. You know, your level of education, professional experience you've had in the past and currently, your projects that you have done, everything that is written on your GitHub or Medium profile, and then the skills and accomplishments that you acquired, whether at school or even on different trainings like 10 academies or, or previous, anything you've done on Cisco, if, I mean, anything, any prior kind of skills you acquired somewhere external, outside school, you know, everything around that, it's what really makes you stand out or what defines you in a professional setup. <clears throat> and the whole purpose of your CV is to put it out there for you to get an interview somewhere. So that's why it's important to be interesting and make whoever reads your CV view you as a valuable to their cause. I mean, uh, to repeat these, your the very first purpose of having a CV is because you want to send it somewhere so that they can see your professional profile and then give you an interview. That's why we all do go through the process of designing our CVs. And that's why it's very important that we have sessions like this so that we can remind ourselves on the components that makes really a good standout CV. <coughs> Sorry. And then um, uh, be able to see if we can actually make it interesting enough for the people who are going to be reading it through. So by writing your effective CV, your, there should be two goals that you should be aiming to satisfy. The number one goal is to ensure that your CV satisfies the humans. That means your CV should be clear, attractive and informative to everyone who's going to be looking at, to every human that is going to be looking at it. That way we're talking about recruiters, hiring managers, talent acquisition managers. I mean, everyone who's going to be having a look on your CV. Number two, as the machines, uh, the CV will be subject to automated scanning by a variety of services, and we want your CV to perform very well in the scanning. You know that the global job, job markets, tech markets now, is very, very big currently because, you know, everyone is, majority of the young people are getting into tech, even the adult people are going into tech, and then, you know, there are always these economics fluctuations that are causing different companies to lay off different people. So it's like there are so many people on the job market currently. And when I, I've been seeing on LinkedIn, hiring managers talking about how they post a role and within like 30 minutes, they get 100 CV. So you can imagine the numbers they get even after one day. It's thousands of CVs. And as a human, to be realistic, you are not going to be fairly going through a thousand CVs. So that's why they use uh, softwares like Autumn. Um, okay, ATS. They call them uh, ATS. And that is the. Um, That is the applicant tracking system that they use. They just give it data as any other software for what to look for. If maybe they are looking for someone based in Ethiopia with this kind of years of experience who has done, let's say, software engineering before and this and that, they just give it the prompts and then they let it filter who fits into those descriptions. So we always want to know that we want to ensure that if this ATS gets on our CV, it's going to be able to filter us out of a thousands. So before we get started, before we get started into then the real components of a CV, I have a quick question here. How long do you think it takes a recruiter to review a CV for the first time? 
you can just give me your number in the chat box. How long do you think it takes a recruiter to review your CV for the first time? Is it 15 minutes, 30 minutes? Is it 10 seconds? Is it 30 seconds? What do you think? <clears throat> I'm seeing 10 minutes, I'm seeing five to 10, 15 seconds, five minutes, 10 seconds. 10 to 20 minutes. Okay, thank you so much for sharing. So the reality from different surveys that has been learned by run by LinkedIn is that it takes an average of 10 to 30 seconds to review your CV for the very first time. So to everyone who said something around seconds, you are very true. And is this is a bit kind of you know very new. I was also shocked when I heard of this news. Um, but then their explanation was that from the recruiter perspective, all they need to do is just to judge, um, you know, for the very first 10, 30 seconds, they're looking at your summary and judge whether they are going to be spending your their time looking at everything else, looking at uh, your work experience, education and everything. So that is why the most significant part of your CV is the top half page and it must give evidence of a good match. I mean, how you introduce yourself at the top of your CV in your summary is what shows the, 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 the recruiter, you know, if you are someone they are looking for or if you are not, you know, that's that summary. And also the way your CV looks, does it have so much designs and a picture and so many colors? There are CVs that do not stand out as professionals. So if they see that you have red, blue colors and green and a picture and, you know, some lines, I mean, a lot of fancy stuff, I'm telling you they're going to pass at it because a good professional CV, it should just be plain and just include what the recruiter is looking for. He's looking for information about you, just information, not about how well you designed your CV. So that is very why. The very first 10 seconds to 30 seconds, it's what catches the attention to continue looking at you, to pay attention at you, or even not. So, uh, how do we then get to, you know, how we say it here to ensure that we show that we are a good match is by demonstrating value, value that uh, the recruiters are looking for and what they have in mind when they are they open that folder of CVs. They are looking for someone asking themselves this question, how can you be valuable to us? You know, and also your value equals your experience, accomplishments, skills, and education. And this is exactly what actually should be in your summary. It doesn't have to be elaborated, but it has to include just, you know, your, sorry, your years of experience, your accomplishments and skills, and even a bit about your education, if it's something you want to include in your summary or not. Or education to be included there is very optional but we're going to be looking at actually what has to be in your summary. And so with this being said, you should understand that your unique combination of experience, accomplishments, skills, and education really articulates your value to the employers. So let's start with the top heading of the CV component. It has to be having your contact information and that goes with your name, uh, your contact information, that means email, phone number, they're very important, and then your address, and then link to your portfolio if you have some. Your GitHub profile, Medium profile, and LinkedIn account. I believe everyone here should be having a GitHub profile at least, but if you do not have one, don't worry, after the training, after three months of training at 10 Academy, we will help you create one that is really great. But I also believe that everyone has one, even though it's not sharp yet, no worries, but I believe everyone has one. And then your Medium profile where you post about your projects or things that you keep working on. Also, if you don't have one, no worries, um, you got us. And then LinkedIn account, very important. If you have some, they should be hyperlinked on your top, um, on the top level of your CV. 
Now let's go into this professional summary. What do we mean by a very good professional summary? This is a 50 word brief description of yourself in relation to what you can do and the concept and the tools that you are familiar with. And with a 50 word summary, the recruiter is able to see your professional title, describes which career track you are pursuing now. That means, are you a gen AI engineer? Are you a machine learning engineer, a software developer, a data engineer? Just, you know, it should be able to show who you are. It should be the very first thing that actually you write on your summary. And then three to five relevant technology words, you know, this should speak to employers and should be an intersection of your experience and skills, the tools, the platform and the frameworks that you are able to use. And then it should show this, that your CV belong to a professional and not a student. Here, I'm highly talking to the people who just graduated who recently graduated or are yet to graduate, you do not want to show uh, a recruiter who's recruiting for a paid opportunity that you are actually a student. Unless you were looking for internship opportunities, but you know, at 10 Academy, since everyone graduates being on an associate level at least to the managerial or engineer level, that's why we encourage that your CV should not be looking like a student you do not have to say oh i'm a student in this and that not really you just define yourself according to what you are actually pursuing maybe i'm a software developer doing a b c d so this is the very first thing about the summary um let me pull an example here so that we can be looking at every section and then be able to look at um, a quick example. So I have a CV of one of the graduates from cohort A, very sharp guy. Um, I realized majority of the people who joined 10 Academy knows him. So let's look at this. He's called Abel Bekele. Let's see what he has in his summary. He said, I'm a generative AI engineer with two plus years of experience in machine learning, NLP, and software development. The very first thing to highlight is who are you? Because, they, they, you know, if an employer is looking for a, an AI engineer, they are going to be seeing that you are actually someone they are looking at, they are looking for. Then with two years of experience, that means your work experience, and then in which sector, machine learning, NLP, and then the software development. This means this person is not, doesn't have two years in generative AI to be specific. He just have two years of experience in these areas, ML, NLP, and software development. And then proficiency, he, continues to talk about then the proficient, the main skills, and then the tools, and then the platforms and the frameworks. We're going to be seeing it in this uh, statement. He continues to say proficient in fine tuning, LLMs, developing rack system, and prompt engineering. Skilled in Python, SQL, React, vector database, and ML frameworks like TensorFlow and PyTorch. A strong background in full stack development, uh, machine learning ops, adept to integrating ML and LLM models into web apps and optimizing pipelines for performance efficiency. So this is his summary. We do not have just to, you, this is a quick example, you know, maybe you do not have these years of experience, then you can, in, 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 you know, maybe you say that you're a software engineer, because you have done trainings, but you have you do not have like tangible work experience about it, you still have to go ahead and say that you are a software engineer, skip the part where you talk about experiences and then go to your proficiency. You know, talk about you know what the kind of skills, the tools, the platforms, and the frameworks that you are able to use. That's what really matters. And uh, you do it according to your own reality. This person already graduated, so that's why they were talking about LLMs, fine tuning, rag systems and stuff. But within your own reality, what defines you? What is your summary? Uh, what's your title? 
what skills have you acquired um what tools are you capable of using and also um platforms and frameworks so that's all about the professional summary let's go ahead and then talk about the technical skills that you have you should um this section about technical skills it helps recruiters to skim your cv and look for familiar keywords technologies and platforms which are relevant to track being applied for so you should be including important acronyms like things that people are familiar with so go ahead and talk about the languages that you currently are able to use is it c plus plus is it java you know on the database uh you know are, are you able to use mysql are you able to use tableau i mean anything but on the skills part highlight everything about the skills you have let's look at the skills example here so he has the skills example on this section and talks about uh, rack pipeline, fine tuning, tokenization, prompt design, embedding, lang chain, Python, SQL, Git, React, TensorFlow, CI, CD pipeline. This is all about the skills that he acquired. And you know, that's you can also highlight yours within your own reality. Let's continue to the next component, which is the experience part. This is where you put relevant work experience, internships, and volunteer positions. So uh, what do we mean here when we say relevant work experience? So majority of the times we want to mean if you have tech background, and then you also have some non-tech background, and you want to apply you want to direct your career in tech right now, it's better to put there your tech background, better, it's better. Yes, it's good to keep there something else you have done in the past, but if you feel like it's no longer aligned with where you are going, do not put it there. Then talking to the people who do not have a technical background, it's okay, put there the relevant work experience you have. And then talking to the people who just graduated and you do not have any work experience, in your work experience se section, talk about the internships and volunteer positions you have held. And I believe everyone here has one or two internships or volunteer positions you have held before and you believe they can add value on your CV. So add them there. And then when framing these, um i'm talking specifically to the people who have had really good work experience or even work experience or relevant work experience whatever ensure that you explain your experiences in what we call the xyz format because recruiters are more interested in your achievements than saying that you did something and what do we mean by your achievements we mean um you know, ask yourself with the work that you were doing, what kind of uh, milestone, I mean, specifically, how did you do, what were you doing? How did you do your work? And what are the top results? And within the results, uh, you know, you tell us about maybe they didn't impact some of the team's milestones or the company in general. And also how many clients did you serve or how many team members you managed if you were a team leader i mean anything that uh, that communicates what you have done but also shows the results let me show you what i mean here take it in three forms before i show you an example on the experience part tell us what did you do how did you do it i mean like were there any tools that you had to use for you to do such activity and also number three, what were the specific results you gained? Let's look at the example here. So um, Abel Bekele was a male ops. Um, excuse me for that. Um, Abel Bekele was an, an, a machine learning ops engineer at this company, Technologies in Addis Ababa, starting from last year. 
So you should be showing, of course, your, uh, what, what was the company, where was it located to, and then what was your title and your duration there. So what he was doing, let's see how he defined what he was doing and the results gained. He said improved tender file processing efficiency by 30%, reducing manual effort from 20 hours to 14 hours per week, by implementing a rack system that extracts requirements and, and enables the trend tracking and highlights special attention items. What did we see here? Improved tender file processing efficiency by 30%. We already understand what he was doing and he showed to the moon straight and said, I, I improved this by 30%. And what else did he do? He reduced manual effort from 20 hours to 14 hours per week. This is something huge. When, when recruiters are looking for someone who's going to be making their work easier, I mean, according to the JDs they put out there, the job description they put out there, but you know, if they're looking for someone who has been making impacts in making the work easier within the team, according to what they were responsible for, by the way, it's going to be, uh, this is going to be an attractive point. And then he continued to say how he actually did it. He said, but I did this by implementing a rack system that extracts requirements, enables deadline tracking and highlights system special attention items. Very great to hear like he included everything if i am if i was someone who has a tech background and i am recruiting for this role like i already understand what uh this means like a hundred percent i will be like this person knows what they were doing and they can you know they had the way to measure their success in what they are doing so the, i need to talk to this person to understand this in details to understand this how you know by implementing this to understand how how did you get to the results you talked about in your cv that's why they invite you in the um in the interview and then let's look at one more uh where he was just uh, someone starting okay here he was uh working in this it service company back in 2021 and he talked about an integrated open source erp with time attendance machine using mysql you know using the mention the kind of tools you were using at grand palace administration of ethiopia enhancing workforce management efficiency by 30 percent enhancing this is the results for 200 employees and also streamlining attendance tracking processes and reducing manual errors by 5%. Crucial thing, if, um, okay, let's get back here. Again, if you did not have like a very good way within your company where you get to track your success, just take this time in the afternoon, think about it. Um, think about it, how, how if there was even no official way, think about how, how did your manager approve that you actually really did something? Or even by just making your own assumptions, how do you think your work impacted the company specifically? Because I know majority of the companies do not put these kind of numbers out there. I don't know, you know, maybe because it's not a big thing, especially working in startups, it's not a big thing. It's not. It's not like an official tracking thing, but thinking about it within your own ways, how do you think you impacted your company using what you were doing Use within your role? I believe like that's very, very clear. The experience part is the very crucial part of the CV. So I hope we pay so much attention here and I hope that we will be reading your CV and be able to see your achievements from what you were doing. And then uh, we have an optional section for now that talks about projects. Um, maybe after graduating at 10 Academy, uh, graduating from the training part, you will be having different projects, really cool projects to talk about here. Uh, but if you don't have some that you have done in the past, then skip this section. But if you have some that you have done and someone can be able 
to see their extension somewhere, maybe in your GitHub repo, you know, just put here those kind of projects. So include the notable projects that you have carried out, including short description with a link to the project. A short description, that means just something you can tell us about that project. Let's go here and see uh, what kind of projects that Abel had. So these are, I, yeah, yeah, these are all 10 Academy projects that he put here. And, you know, let's just read one of them. One was about contract advisor rack system. And a short intro was that uh, there was a rack system for contract QA integration LLMs and external data chunking and indexing contracts or precise retrieval. Then uh, it also revolutionized contracts management with accurate context rich answers to complex queries. So just put here a description of your project, something that is really interesting to read. And then Hypermonk, a link here where we can go and you know where it can redirect us to the GitHub. Um, you know, so that we can read more about it. So this is his GitHub and all about that project. So better if you have some, please go ahead and add them on your CV. And if you don't, please skip this section. Then let's go to the education part. Include your education background in reverse chronological order. That means, let's say, if you have a master's now, start with your master's degree and then go to any postgraduate you did and then go to the bachelor's and stop there. Do not mention any high school or primary school education. They are not relevant at this kind of stage um, of professionalism. They are not relevant. They, are not, they do not count. So, and if you do not have a master's, of course you understand you have to get from a bachelor and then that's it, bachelor and that's it. And also if you have, um, okay, we will see that. And then if you want to include your GPA, just include it there, but only if it's like a three plus. If it's something two point something, do not include it. It's not, and GPA is not something mandatory for CVs. So, you know, if you wanna include it, include it, but also if you do not want, no worries. And then uh, relevant coursework or trainings and their completion dates, um, talking to people who have done maybe ALX, if you know ALX, and, and also maybe you have done some other physical trainings within your country, or you have done some other online uh, accredited courses. When I say accredited courses, I do not mean like something you just got at Cisco and it was just a course of like two days. Um, you know, something that you feel like is not big to sound big on your CV, do not put it there. Put their trainings that really lasted kind of long, something from one month. Even if it's not a training or it's an online course, but it took you one month to complete, that is always a legit thing because you want employers to see that, um, you, to see the big picture about you because some other small, small kind of trainings and certifications, they do not count. They, they they do yes they added up on your skills but in this kind of job market they do not count so something from one month plus is always very very legit and then when we get at licenses and certification our uh, this is a section to have if you have them and this is a section to not have if you do not have any license or certification and what do we mean by licenses we mean um for instance people who have some aws kind of license i'm not sure if we have some here but we have had like two in the past cohorts some people who have like the aws kind of accredited licenses so you know put them there and then when it comes to certifications also put them there put them in also reverse chronological order with the very recent received certificates to the to the list received certificate and they should be having your names of the certification 
the issuing organization, the date you earn the certification, the location if applicable, and also additional additional detail or very small information about that certification because majority of the certification you cannot assume that everyone knows about them so just have a uh, like very small one line to two lines description about that that certificate and you know that is it and if you have uh, your license in a pdf form or you can picture it if you have it physical have it in a drive that can be accessible and then put a link there so that uh, someone can actually prove that you had that certification. So um, let me see if I have an example on our bells. I don't think so. He doesn't have any certification. Okay, but that's it. Okay, but before we continue, let me show you, I think I skipped the education part. Um, okay, on the education, this is how he wrote it, Generative AI Engineer at Ten Academy. Um, because, of course, he started by saying that he's a Gen AI Engineer, but he doesn't have any work experience being a Gen AI Engineer. So it's important to mention it here on the education part so that the hiring managers can be able to differentiate your experience from what you actually know from studying. So yeah, Generative AI Engineer, Ten Academy, California, USA here. And then Software Engineering at ALX Africa, he was in Nairobi. And then his bachelor in Hawassa University in Ethiopia. And that was it. Yeah, and he had to highlight different courses that he did throughout uh, his bachelor here. This is very uh, optional you can do or you cannot it, the places that you have to have them highlighted it's on linkedin but in your cv it's very optional you can have them there or not and also to the people who have their own websites please include it within your contact information you can see that he included his github uh, the linkedin medium and also his own website or portfolio website if i can say it like that Okay, let's go back here. <clears throat> um, so, uh, uh, we are done with the components of what we should be having in our CVs. Then uh, let's look at then the good case practices or things that we have to take care of because really first impressions are very important. So use professional consistency with your styles, punctuation, and fonts. You do not have to want to have your summary with a font size of 12, and then have uh, the rest of the contents with a font size of 13 or 14. It's not really good looking. So have the consistency with your styles, with your punctuations, and with your fonts. Everything should be in reverse chronological order, that means when it comes to experience, when it comes to your projects, when it comes to um, education, everything should be highlighted from the, at the top there should be uh, what has been recently achieved and then going back to what has been achieved in the past years. And then um, ensure you look at the page layout and centering and lining up of your CV. Just ensure that everything margins or lines that you have there really are good looking as well. Utilize bullet points in order of importance. That means, um, let's go here. <clears throat> what do we mean by bullet points in order of importance? That means the first thing you have on the very first point it should be very very crucial than the second one and then than the third one so like in order of importance like abel i'm pretty sure he wanted that the hiring managers be able to see these very fast and then they can continue to read the rest so in order if, of importance what's important here what's less important here and then what's least important here And then um, we say one to two pages at most. And um, why did I write this here? Please ignore this last line. I think it was a guidance. And then one to two pages most, but we highly advise that your CVB on just one page. 
if you can't have it on one page, have it on two pages for Tuesday. But for Saturday, we are going to be looking into how we can, how you can have uh, one page maximum. One page is always very encouraged. It's ideal, and it's what shows the recruiter that there are points that you care about within your work. Because I'm pretty sure. Let's look at Abel. Abel had three points maximum, and then two bullet points up, down here. It doesn't mean these are the only things that he actually done, but these are the most important things that defines him and who he is as a gen AI engineer, the most important ones. So try just to stretch your information in, in order of importance and then define them in kind of a solid way that is very understandable, but then have very few bullet points and ensure that it's just on one page. Because you can see, he just have one page CV. It includes all informations, and they are very, very solid. So we want that you try the same thing. If you can't, then you know we will see how we can do it. But on Saturday, everyone should be able to have like one page CV. So final checklist: your CV should have no picture. Um, this is kind of a global thing now, just because. Our, you know, it, it was something from different recruiters and some of the people who just, you know, let, let's say from the biggest job market where it is right now, it's in the US and Europe. And there are so much things about races, about religion, about sexual orientation, about a lot of things. So some people have been claiming that they get judged about from how they look and, and stuff, you know, just kind of, we know we we know how this is a big deal. We, we live in Africa, fortunately, we do not have those kind of stress. But majority of the companies we apply to, they advise that you do not have any picture on your CV. They just want to screen your information, not how you look. And then one page maximum. Name is hundred percent consistent across your CV, LinkedIn, and GitHub. Um, this regards majority to the people who have more than two names. Please ensure that your name is consistent. Like I can go to LinkedIn and look at your CV and be able to tell that you are the same person. And then all links should be able to be clickable. That means everything you hyperlinked on your CV, on your website, or oh, sorry, on your LinkedIn, or in your website, on your GitHub, everything should be clickable, or even the links to your projects. Then CV should be served in your PDF in a PDF format and it should be having your name slash CV, sorry, underscore CV. And then it should be having really zero spelling mistakes. Zero spelling mistakes. Just proofread if what you wrote does not have any grammar error. You do not want to just miss any opportunity because you typed something wrongly. So avoid those small, small mistakes. And then zero issues with formatting. We talked about this, being consistent about the font size, type spacing, paragraphing. You know, this implies that you have proofread it yourself at least twice. Then experience, skills, and results are consistency and correlate. That means um, if you talked about the results from, I don't know, from your project or from your work, and then I click on your LinkedIn and it says different information, please, it's not a really good thing to do. So ensure that all the information are consistent. There should be no logos, no background colors, no icons or other graphics. Just keep it simple like we saw. And then use appropriate keywords um, matching the job posting. OK, ignore this last word. But just uh, appropriate keywords that are related with your field. So up to the challenge document. Let's look at the challenge document and what we have to pay attention to. Um, it will tell you that the first submission deadline is on Tuesday today, 8 p.m. UTC. And then final submission deadline is on Saturday 31st. So by today, you should submit. After this, if you do not meet this deadline, you always have one hour buffer time. That means until 9 p.m. UTC for you to submit. But ensure that your goal is today. And then final CV, we will go through it give you personal feedback and then uh you will have to work on them ensure that the final submission uh is on saturday 
So what is the main exercise? Is to submit your CV by carefully following these instructions we have below. The following link provides more information and tips on constructing a, a, a good CV. It's mainly like highlighting what we saw in the slides, but also th these are just written and very well detailed. Let's look at it. If it's four pages maximum and tries to put details into what we already talked about, so feel free to check it out. Let's go back to the challenge document. Okay. So what requirements do we have? It's one page CV PD in PDF format. This is strictly a requirement, so try as you can. If you feel like all your informations are not fitting there, try to make it one half or two pages. And then within the review, we will see what we can do to make it one page. And then your email address, phone number, and addresses should be listed. Provide a 50 word summary of yourself. Same thing we talked about, lists um, all of your most important technical skills and soft skills. Be careful not to list too many skills, just list the most relevant you are so confident about. Not something that you know, just the basics, the, you know, just something that you are co very confident about. And then um, example of technical skills can be like Python, SQL, C++, etc. Then example of soft skills can be anything from teamwork, communication, problem solving, time management, critical thinking, design make, design thinking, decision making, and organizational skills. And what we say by not putting in so many skills is because sometimes we tell ourselves, oh, I'm good at time management, let's say. And you get in a, an interview or, you know, someone asks you how to prove that you are a very good time manager. They ask you about the tools and techniques you use for time management. And you feel like, you know, you don't know much about time management, actually. So let's put there the things that we are very confident about, something, um, you know, that we use on a daily basis and we use it strategically. And then consider how best to make easy for an employer to scheme and understand what you are capable of delivering by organizing into relevant sections. And this is someone can ask themselves, uh, to pause here for a moment, someone can ask themselves, why did I keep talking about employers and staff? It's because also we keep these CVs, yes, for our evaluation for week zero, but also throughout the training, we have different employer partners we work with who always want to see your CV from the very start of the beginning. And then at, this, at the end of the training, they request the same CV, like they go into the CVs uh, that we give them at the, at the start of the training. And then we give them the others at the end of the training that they can skim through and be able to choose different people they can invite on different interviews uh, you know just to hire them like we have a couple of numbers that they have to take from every intake so that's why that's why i kept mentioning employer that's why i kept emphasizing on different points so let's ensure that we actually do this for any future employer that we don't know about now so let's continue here uh, you list your education in chronological order. We already talked about these. These are just reminders. And then use digits and spe instead of spelled out numbers. If you did 3% of something, then it's just 3, you know, percent. Where is my percent? You know, yeah, go. what did I do? It just has to be 3% just written in numbers, easy to read. Then use box rule, describe your experience very well. The box rule is something from Google that actually explains the other XYZ format we talked about within your experience. What did you do? How did you do it? And what did you achieve from it? Then we have different CV examples here, or CV templates that you can use. Let's look at it. We have a plain, easy to go through CV sample that you can use. If you have any other, you know, CV sample uh, from any kind of 
civic creator platforms, no worries. But if you don't have one, feel free to use this one. So you just highlight your current title here, then your full name, and then um, your phone numbers, email, media, GitHub, everything should be highlighted, hyperlinked here. One of the things that you do not have here, please ensure to delete them. Then your address, then your professional summary, your skills, technical skills, and then the software tools that you used. And we add something here about non-technical skills. Just realized I forgot. And then work experience, um, you know, work experience from what you have done, ensure that you, again, put them in XYZ format. We put it here so that you can remember um, and then talk about the projects that you did. If you do not have any projects, feel free to delete these and then education. And then we have optional sections that you can put here if you do have or not, like the license and certification. So they are very optional. Majority of the people don't have those kind of things. So that, that's why we ignore it from the template. But if you have them, feel free to add that section. It's just by copying these and then pasting down, you will be able to, to have it. And then this is non-editable because everyone has to use it. So if you, oh gosh, I've been speaking, but I was not presenting. Someone didn't tell me. Okay, but this is it. I was talking about uh, this is how it looks. It's plain, it's easy to go through. Put here all the information, you know, contact information, add here your professional summary, talk about the skills and the software tools you're capable of using. And then our work experience highlighted here. We put here the XYZ format uh, thing. And then the project section, feel free to delete it if you don't have any. And then education. And if you have any license or certification, feel free to add another section, call it certification and licenses or just certification according to what you have. And that would be it. It's just by copying these and then pasting down here, it will be able, you know, you will see everything like, it's, uh, like it is here. It won't change your format. And then this is very non-editable because uh, it's used by everyone who wants a format. So for you to create yours, you have to come here and click here at files and then click here at make a copy, call it however you want. Let's say, um, just, okay, call it according to the requirement, Pascaline, Yudusenga, CV. That's it, and then click to make a copy. Okay, that's it. Uh, let's go back to the challenge document. We have other checklists like we talked about during the presentation, so feel free to read them again. And then with the support and meeting tutor and tutorials, it's, you know, we just run it today. And uh, if you need any assistance, feel free to inbox me. I will be super happy to help. And then we have the marking rubrics. These are the things we consider when we are grading, because yes, even though it's very crucial to have this, we will still grade your, um, you know, the effort you put into really crafting your CV well. And we are going to be considering everything that is written here. So feel free just to check them out. This is, we share rubrics for us to be transparent with how we measure your performance. So you know, just know that we're going to be looking at everything that is written here and everything that is not written here, it doesn't have to be a concern. We will not be looking at it at all. And then individual feedback is going to be given. And we have like, what's the usefulness of our CV in real life? I think we already talked about it, but a good CV is a foundation of a successful career launch and a proper outlined CV shows both your past accomplishments and also your potential for future success. So let's go ahead and do it. And when you're done, upload the a PDF on Tanks. You have to download it as a PDF and then submit it on Tanks. Um, that is it, kind of very straightforward challenge. So yeah, can go through the questions if there are any.
So may I ask if there is a project which have certification but not found in GitHub, is it good to mention? Yeah, absolutely. And if it has certification, can you be able to link it? It will be better. It will be better. If it's physical, take a picture of it, upload it in your drive, and then hyperlink its link on your CV. Or if you already have it on your drive, then you know put the link there. Okay, Carmel. Uh, so for today, are we uploading uh, our old CV or uh, then we then new CV? We are going to make. No, for today we we run this session so that you do not have to submit the CV that you have currently. Like this session is for you to go back in your CV and see does it fulfill all the requirements, and if it doesn't, what do I have to change, and then submit. But by today we expect that you look into everything that is here and then submit a CV that fulfills all these requirements. Why do we have a second submission? Is that always any mistakes can be done or you can forget about something? And then we will have to go through it again and give you feedback and ensure that on Saturday, then you have a very good solid CV. But as of today, we expect that you still submit a solid CV according to the requirements. Yeah, thank you so much. That was a good question. Uh, any other question? Okay, perfect. Um, if there are no any other questions, then we are right on time. Enjoy the evening and see you again tomorrow. Bye for now. Thanks for joining.